We've got benchmarks from Apple's M1 Max Max, the 12900K already shipping out to people, and boy, how did that packaging look nice? And the future, the true future of what NVIDIA wants to, you to do is now here. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And let's go ahead and start off with the big Max news, which is, Geekbench and other benchmarks are coming out regarding Apple's new M1 Max chips. And Apple may not have been lying, at least according to preliminary synthetic benchmarks that we're seeing. Obviously, take this with a whole grain of salt because you need to actually have this compared in real workload scenarios, but this is just in synthetic scenarios. And regardless of what I say, just know, this isn't for video games because you can't really game on Mac right now, especially on M1, but that likely will be changing as, you know, Linux gaming starts proliferating everywhere. But enough of the caveating, let's take a look at the M1 Max with its 32 core GPU, 10.4 teraflop performance, which is more like an RTX 3060 mobile, but yet it is going toe to toe with a 6800M in an RTX 3080 mobile and almost an RTX 3070 desktop, depending on how you're comparing this. So this is in GFX Bench in the OpenGL API. And you can see here that the M1 Max is beating the 3080 mobile in a lot of scenarios. It's also losing in a lot of scenarios, but for Apple's second generation GPU, this is not actually all that bad, especially when you consider things like the fact that it only has 60 watts of power draw, whereas the 3080 mobile might be at up to 160 watts of power draw. This is looking quite promising. And that's not the only one we have. As you can see here, comparing the M1 Max to the 3070 laptop and the 3080 laptop, the RTX versions are actually performing worse in the Metal versus DirectX comparison, and the 3070 desktop is only 3.5% faster than the M1 Max. This is just looking really good for Apple. It's a little less good when you compare an OpenCL performance because the RTX 3060 mobile on this Dell XPS smacks the crap out of the M1 Max, but I think that's something that we're going to see as the new Apple devices are rolled out, that it's going to vary from workload to workload. And in reality, for things that are being programmed for Mac OS and all of that kind of stuff, we're likely to see this thing perform like a heavy hitter. And I am more excited now that I'm seeing these numbers, obviously waiting for more details to come out, but even the Geekbench 5 score looking pretty good for the next gen chips from Apple. What do you think of the M1 Max? Let me know down below in the comments. Obviously this is not gaming performance, but for anything like accelerated tasks on laptops, I'm, I'm, this is, I want to throw my money at them. That's where I'm currently sitting. And do you want to throw your money at AMD and Microsoft because they've teamed up to come up with a new GPU that you can't buy, the Halo Infinite RX 6900 XT. Look at that bad boy. It looks pretty good, it, but that's all you're ever going to see are these renderings of it. This is never going to exist in reality that you can actually get your hands on, but it technically does exist and they made it. Microsoft also making new Xbox Series expansion cards for 512 gigs, as well as two terabyte options. Those being rolled out as opposed to just the one terabyte option that's been available since the console launch. The 512 gigs gonna cost $140 and the two terabytes gonna cost $400, which is actually really, really expensive. And it just, it makes it frustrating that Microsoft is not opening up to third party SSD vendors like Sony is because Sony gives you better price to performance when it comes to upgrading your, your storage in your console. And I think this was a necessary move by Xbox to open this up now that Sony has rolled out the PlayStation 5 firmware that supports that SSD expansion. But now you can get an Xbox Series S, which is $300 plus the 512 gig card for around $440, which is still a little less than the Series Series X and doesn't make a whole lot of financial sense, but at least now you can install Warzone, my friends. And can you install lower Bitcoin prices? Well, somebody has, because it's time to talk about the crypto stocks update. Bitcoin down 5.6% to sit at $62,000. Obviously, yesterday it hit its all time high, so nearly $67,000. It's come down a little bit from that peak since then. Ethereum also slightly down 1.76%, but still sitting above $4,000. Dogecoin down 4% to sit at 24 and a half cents, kind of where it's been hovering for the last few weeks or so. GameStop meme stonks not having a great day. GameStop down 1.52% to close at 181.71 and AMC down a whole 4% to close below $40 yet again. This has just been a roller coaster of AMC closes, my friends, up and down and up and down and just you'd never move anywhere. And it's all the same. Crypto stocks not doing much. Tesla doing a whole heckin' lot with them coming out with their Q3 earnings report and realizing that they're making a whole lot of profit and selling a whole lot of cars. They have now achieved an 
annual run rate of a million vehicles per year starting from one year ago at the end of Q3. They're shipping a million cars per year, which is very impressive for Tesla. They also announced in this report that they're planning on tripling the size of the supercharger network within the next two years which will be a lot of superchargers. And as somebody who just completed a cross dual cross country road trip in a Tesla Model X, this would just make things even easier. They're also confirming that the Cybertruck prototypes have been expanded. There's more of them out there. They do have side view mirrors, rear view mirrors as you side view, right? Because the rear view is the one in the car, however you want to pronounce it. And also coming with rear wheel steering to help you navigate tight turns. And that hopefully, according to them, it should be launched next year, especially after the Model Y starts getting produced at their Austin, Texas Gigafactory. So a lot of money being made by Tesla, a 1.62 billion net income, growing their operating income 54%, just making a ton of cash, selling 232,000 units of the Model 3 and the Model Y. Tesla continuing to be wildly successful and Elon Musk also getting some more success when it comes to his boring company they got the green light for their Las Vegas tunnel expansion which initially I thought all of this was supposed to be like hyperloop crap and then eventually it turned into like we can't make hyperloops we just we board tunnels and now you drive Teslas in the tunnels which that's a subway that's you just invented a subway but with cars and not not the eat fresh place but the drive fresh place okay the system's being approved to expand 29 miles of tunnels in 51 different stations with them saying 57,000 passengers might be able to travel through it per hour wouldn't a subway have been more efficient i just why does it need to be tested am i not am i missing something with how this whole boring thing is getting set up i will tell you i'm missing something on my face and that is razor zephyr mask which is now officially available for sale for hundred dollars you can't pull this off this guy can't even pull this off you think i'm gonna be able to pull this off well i'm gonna try a hundred dollars for the basic kit 150 dollars if you want 33 sets of filters for all of the n95 filtering that's going on with the mask i i think this looks ridiculous. It's the legit product from them. It costs $100. Are you going to pick one up? Let me know down below in the comments. And I, I want to pick one of these up, but I'm not going to right now because I just, I can't justify it. But Sony announced its A7 IV cameras yesterday, 33 megapixels, 4K 60 FPS video recording at $2,500. Full frame has all of the goodness that you would expect from an A7 S3, kind of molded into the package of what is normally just the regular A7 lineup. It's looking pretty good. $2,500, not a whole lot to ask. I'm not going to bore you with all of the details, but it's exciting that got announced. And what still hasn't been announced as far as the release date by Intel, but is coming out in the packaging, the 12900K shipping out to its first com customers. And after seeing this IRL, I think I like this packaging a lot better. Having that golden wafer that's sitting inside this box, that's just, it looks immaculate. I really like it. Good job, Intel, for the 12900K packaging. I, I appreciate this. What do you think of the Intel 12900K packaging? I wanna hear from you. Also, Threadripper, next gen. We got some benchmarks rolling out. The 5975WX showing up in Geekbench, uh, performing 34% and 23% higher than the 3970X in single core and multi core tests, which is actually pretty good for a year on year generational increase. We're just waiting on the, a release date for that whenever this might actually start rolling out what is rolling out is stadia google stadia we're still talking about them they're rolling on out of probably the whole platform but they're also lending it out to other companies such as warner brothers who is now licensing it somehow on the back end to play video games for their company batman arkham knight being streamed by stadia on the at&t website which is really intriguing especially considering the fact that batman arkham knight's not available on stadia and it was playing on linux even though arkham knight is not available on any linux platform so they're clearly getting this done as a one-off for warner brothers stadia not being mentioned anywhere in this entire experience you have to confirm with your AT&T phone number and billing zip code in order to play it now for free but in case you want to do that Stadia is around I guess and what is now around is Nvidia's game plan okay we're not talking anymore about GPU selling them to servers selling them to you directly no my friends you want to know what created this whole stock shortage of GPUs this is the long game by Nvidia they don't want to sell you GPUs anymore they want you to pay monthly for them and that's what's going on with GeForce Now's RTX 3080 cloud gaming set up this I mean I'm over exaggerating a little bit there this is not causing the stock shortage but it does indicate a 
ongoing revenue for Nvidia where they don't have to ship out as many cards, but can get more and more people accessing this stuff. This is on top of their GeForce Now original platform where you could get it with either the founders or regular membership, but you can now guarantee RTX 3080 gaming, which will give you 1440p streaming, 120 frames per second and 4K HDR on Shield TV devices with ultra low latency, according to them, which is 70 times faster than the average laptop on Steam, 13 times faster than the average M1 MacBook, and seven times faster for the most popular desktop configuration on Steam, you're gonna get a whole new brand new experience. And it's only gonna cost you $99 every six months, $200 a year. Maybe you would never shell out $1,200. How much does the 3080 cost? I forgot already, RTX 3080 price. $699, right? That's a, yeah. Maybe you would never shell out $700 for the RTX 3080, but if you pay for this for three and a half years, well, they got your revenue. And if they stop releasing GPUs as often, this might be a good recurring method for them to get the cash. And it might be better for you to do this, honestly, because they just announced that they're supporting the new MMO New World, so their GPUs will die and yours won't, and you won't have to submit them for RMA. It's great. You don't have to risk your hardware anymore. As much as I'm crapping on all of this, I do appreciate the fact that Nvidia is constantly upgrading their GeForce Now infrastructure. It makes a whole lot of sense. Stadia promised that they were going to do that. That's never happened. So getting an increase in the streaming performance is good. I would prefer if it came at the actual already memberships that exist rather than having to pay for a new membership in order to get access to this because it just seems like a cash grab move. But I also really like GeForce Now, just as like a base level customer. I think it's the best cloud streaming platform out there. It makes the most sense. You buy the games on external platforms like Steam, Epic Games, and then you play them on their hardware. And if you ever actually get around to buying your own computer, you can still play those games as opposed to a lot of other cloud streaming platforms which don't have that option. But regardless, what do you think of GeForce Now's RTX 3080 subscription model? Let me know down below in the comments. I'm gonna let you know that, that this episode of Hot News is over. Don't forget that on Saturdays, we have This Week in News, where we recap all of the news that you may have missed this week for breakfast tomorrow on the weekend. And I will see you there, my friends. Cheers.